I'd never ever forget their face. They were just looking at me like, I'd never expect this from Brad. I'm welcoming a long-term friend of mine from childhood, Mr. Brad Parker of Melior Life. The fact that you get to wake up and fill your bed sheet is the most important thing. You're literally like a stress ball with Louis Vuitton. If you're going to catch up with me down the night, I'm brilliant. I was caught in this very toxic lifestyle, you know, surrounded by money, surrounded by women, surrounded by drinks, surrounded by drugs, surrounded by all of these toxic environments. It's an addiction. Now that we've grown up, you can really see how much you're influenced and how you change as a person by the people that you're surrounded with. From a young age, I had this lad persona that nothing can affect me. I live life at 100 miles an hour, broke down. I had all the money I could possibly want. I was miserable as fuck. I was just in my bed and crying my fucking eyes out. Oh, there's, there's more, there's more. I know there's more. I couldn't put my finger on it. I knew I had to become happy again. I knew I knew I had to become happy. I knew I had to find purpose. But my main goal was just to wake up the next day. I made a promise to myself there and then that like, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure no one's loved one wakes up without a loved one. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So before we begin today's podcast, I'd like to say a big thank you to Casita Properties, the UK property company when it comes to off-market discrete buy-to-let sales. All their links will be in the description below. So as you can see, we're in a new studio and I'm welcoming a long-term friend of mine from childhood, Mr. Brad Parker of Melior Life. Brad, it's good to have you on the uh, channel, mate. It's nice to see you, mate. Nice to finally sort of cross paths again. Yeah, well, it's going to be good fun. We're going to... Um, so Brad and I, we've known each other since sort of secondary school time, isn't it? It's, it's been a while, been many years. But Brad, tell us a little bit about, well, who you are and what you're doing. So yeah, Brad Park, I'm the owner of Medio Life Coaching. <clears throat> uh, where do you want me to go down to? Childhood? <laughs> start, yeah, let's start from where Yeah, where so for the reason I'll... Yeah, so as a child, I went to... Um, I was brought up in a very, very loving family. Uh I had a, lot, a little bit of dramas at school. I was never the tallest kiddie, as you all know. So I went through a lot of bullying when I was younger. Um, and then I was I just started to become someone I wasn't. I was like putting on a front constantly. I had to sort of try and fit in wherever I went and built up this really, really lad persona from such a young age. So from a young age, I've always had this hard exterior of who I felt I had to be to fit into society. Um, so yeah, I, this is why I'm a life coach now. Um, because for me now it's just bring, about bringing you know people into real life and just being the actual person that they should be because I spent a lot of years pretending to be someone I wasn't I've become a prick um, and I just I did have a lot of anger you know I was sexually abused when I was younger so from from a very young age I was so angry at the world and angry at everyone I just never felt like I actually fit in and when I did fit in someone had betrayed the trust and it, it was just an ongoing battle so yeah, I went on to sort of, that was at junior school, went on to secondary school. I played rugby from a young age. Um, could never play football. Well, I could play football, but I just, you know, there was no interest in it. I think I'd done it just to get out of class. <laughs> um, and yeah, I went to secondary school and then it just, it, it escalated a lot more. I was more, oh, but it was, instead of being Bradley Parker, it was like Brad Parker. I've got to have this name for myself, you know, I've, I've got to constantly have, you know, a bird on the go. I've got to constantly have this really proper like, alpha male ego. And it was like, I loved everyone that knew me, but it was never for the right reasons. I built up such a, I would say a bad reputation for myself when there was just no need. Yeah. It's funny though, because I know exactly what you're going on about because obviously I grew up as well and we were at different schools and, you know, but very much like the circles are the same and I know exactly what you mean. You know, so many people suffer from what you just said. Like we've all been to it, you know, that whole yeah. persona, especially with, you know, like for me when I was younger as well, I was playing a lot of football, I love getting out of class early, you know, um, and there was, there was this whole, you had to keep up this like reputation of, the name, but but don't you think though, especially as males though, we go through that and we've gone through, I think we're in a, we've gone through a period of social media wasn't massive. Like we had MSN, we had Bebo at the time, like then My it went face. onto Facebook, yeah. but we weren't, we didn't have like the full frontal kind of exposure that we do now. So we kind of had that, you know, we had to keep up a front, but the front was like face to face front. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't an online front so much. And no. that, that was... 
It's you worse. almost had to show up, didn't you? Like if, if someone's going to confront you, you had to show up. Yeah, it is, it is, it is worse because I never had, there's, there's no reality. Not that there's much reality in social media, but we don't, we live in such a world where it's that everyone's in competition with each other. So from a young age, everyone's got to be the boy. Everyone's got to be the most popular person. So you're chasing something where there's no end goal. So yeah. you're never finding happiness from a young age. So yeah, just like even at school, it was, it was, I hate, I hated school. I love sport, but I hated school. I, hate, I could never, it put me in a room. It's like putting a lion in a cage. Yeah. Teachers talking to me. I'm just waffle. Yeah. Absolute waffle. Just couldn't consume anything. I'm, I'm, we're, all, we're from a young age, you know, babies, like you're screaming, you're shouting, you're, you're demanding what you want from, we're born, we're, we're meant to express ourselves. Right. So when I went into the education system, I've got all this anger, I've got all these insecurities, got all this fear, and I'm sitting in a classroom chair and I can't learn. So on top of that, I'm thinking I'm stupid. I'm in a bottom set for everything. I'm thick. So from a young age, I've identified myself and I've only ever done this. I've identified myself as, you know, a small person that can't put on weight. You know, I couldn't eat I was pretty much had an eating disorder until I was about seven, I think. Um you know, sexually abused, fucking bullied. Um, parents grafted their asses off, so we never really had a lot of money. Um, so from a young age, I'd built up this character in my head that it all I had to put a front on. But I, really inside, I was just a scared, insecure little boy. So school for me was a nightmare. I loved the sport. <clears throat> I was very, very good at rugby. You know, I went on to college, ended up playing for England Colleges. Um, and... College was the turning point. I got a drug ban for taking steroids. Yeah. Um, literally at the end of my last game of the England College's game, I got a drug ban. Um, first time I broke down crying, even through like losing family members and that. And to me, it was just like my whole world, everything I'd ever wanted to be was over there and then. And it's all because them comments from a young age building up about I'm never going to be big enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not strong enough. The demand for me to play was absolutely ridiculous. And I got a drug ban and I broke down, cried my eyes out, rang my dad. And my dad, I thought he'd go fucking mental. He understood. He was just like, I know how much you wanted your dream. All the comments from coaches and people like that, I just got pushed to, to making a wrong decision. And then, yeah, whole world just ended there. And then I thought anyway, so I went off to, um, I went off to Ironapa. I ended up doing five years in Ironapa. Um, just again, running away. First two seasons, like you enjoy it. You're meant to do that at a young age. And then, Everyone from college was going on to, you know, get jobs and do very well in business and stuff. And five, six years later, I'm still just drinking every every night for six months of the year. I'd come back, I'd sit in a car every weekend, go out and make as much money as I possibly wanted to make. So I was I was caught in this very toxic lifestyle of, you know, surrounded by money, surrounded by women, surrounded by drink, surrounded by drugs, surrounded by all of these toxic environments it's an addiction you can't come out of it it's but, impossible but you know there's a big lesson here i see i know the types of people that you're hanging around with yeah. you know i had the, i had them at my school as well you know because i was getting sucked into some of it but i think where you know where i was where i was playing i was blessed where i was playing such a high level of football i knew that i had to yeah. stay on the right side of it because like i had like they would check on my school reports and stuff but i did know like you know for knowing some of the people that you were around i can totally understand because some of those were pretty tough kids <laughs> yeah. and the thing is there's one, once you're in it's almost like you've got to prove yourself and and i would say there is a message here like that there's a big thing to take away from that is now that we've grown up you can really see how much you're influenced and how you change as a person by the people yeah. that you're surrounded with so there is a big message there choose carefully the people that you surround with because there's that saying tyra and ash said this if you surround yourself with four dickheads, you become the fifth. Yeah, right. And I love that one because it's totally true and it's dangerous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So for me, it was exactly that. But I went to, I went to a, like a sports college. So there was no one in criminal activity at the college. When I left college was when I started getting involved in certain things I shouldn't do. Then, then other people come into my life. And when, when you're in that life, no, no one really gives a fuck about you. It's just about, oh, you're going to bring them to the table to make some money. So I've done, yeah, I've done... So my fifth year in Ionapa, it's like running away, like just, I had the worst year of my life. Like my nan died, who was my absolute world. Um, so I'll talk about, uh, so yeah, my nan died. My mate was um, stabbed in the throat a week, two weeks later, three weeks later in Ionapa. So I saw him um, on the table at the hospital, you know, 
dead purple they'd cleaned up the scars and now all the boys are in the corridor I heard the screaming um one of the lads run into the room to go and see him I ran in to drag him out and then just sat with one of the lads we both just crying just like looking at him so and then flew back went to my mom my, my nan's funeral flew back out to Anapa that happened and then went to my friend's funeral and then two weeks later this girl that I was sort of seeing on and off throughout the summer dropped it on me that she'd had an abortion behind my back she didn't want me to know about it so in the space of not even three months it's three traumatic experiences that was just mad so again i just i didn't i didn't grieve i just like home get in the car get in unbelievable shape and i'm gonna go and join my two best mates in be for the following year so got in you know i was just working every weekend in the car you know it was my little empire it weren't ideal but it, it financially i'd be able to look after people around me and stuff and it served a purpose then and then i went off to ibiza and i didn't know what i was getting myself into like i really didn't have a clue we moved over there uh next thing you know like we set up a phone over there ridiculous absolutely ridiculous the phone would ring every 45 60 seconds you're making, you know, four or five thousand euro a day. You know, you're going to clubs and you're spending a thousand euro without even thinking about it. So I just got, again, sucked in, mad lifestyle. You go out in the car in the morning, you've got the Guardia Civil over there, like your anxiety, your paranoia. Then if you've gone out, obviously the fucking, the come down or the anxiety from drink. And you just sucked into this life of just like, I got to the point where if I wasn't saving a thousand pound a week and it was like 800 quid, I'd get pissed off. I had no no appreciation for money. I just thought like, ah, oh, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? You're going to sleep, it's 25, 30 grand under the bed. You don't even bat an eye down. You don't appreciate it. Just look at it as if it's paper, like it's nothing. Then um, then obviously there's the pressure of everything COVID of how big we did actually get. Like just towards the end of the summer, I remember I was at Ocean Beach and paranoia just kicked in. Like sat there, I was like, but fucking hell, like people looking at me, like I'm gonna get nicked. Left when I'm, and this is where my first, my first start of my breakdown happened. Like I just got to the bottom of the f where I was staying over the road, and I just hit the deck, cried my eyes out. Two best mates come running down because someone rang them, and I'll I never ever forget their face. They were just looking at me like, I'd never expect this from Brad. Yeah. Because from a young age, I had this lad persona that nothing can affect me. I live life at 100 miles an hour, yeah. broke down. And then when I left Ibiza, come back, I had all the money I could possibly want. I was miserable as fuck. Absolutely miserable as fuck. Literally, I could have bought, could have done whatever I wanted to do. And I was just in my bed and crying my fucking eyes out, begging my mum not to go to work. I was in a relationship at the time that just made me so miserable. Walked away from that and then, yeah, man, just crashed hard my nan my uncle dying like all of the all of the stuff that i built up over the years the rugby everything and i was like i can't go away again next summer one my mum and dad wouldn't let me um mum actually threatened to take my passport off me she was like i'll stop you going anyway like oh, please don't do this to me and i was like fair enough and yeah just broke mate like 23 years of age i think i was had the world if you looked on the outside it's like you've had a, an unbelievable life very very you know grateful to be able to live the life i have lived but it got to the point where i was just waking up every day and i'll just look at the back of my door and i was just like you know, i just wish i was hanging off the back of that it's all over all of these thoughts going to sleep you know on i'd, I'd go to sleep nervous knowing i was going to wake up on edge mm -hmm. i knew that I, the only time i'd get some peace was when i was asleep because i might have a happy dream yeah. and then i'd wake up go into my mum's bedroom beggar and beggar and beggar not to go to work I'd lay with her in the bed just like crying she'd have to go to work i'd go downstairs sleep with the dog downstairs sleep my whole day away on edge mum would have to ring me mum and dad probably rung me i reckon minimum six times throughout the day just to make sure i'm still alive um do you know do you know what you 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 talking like this and this is a really clear case and like we there's a we all go through it like i think what I'm going to say here, reality catches up on you. Yeah. Like what, what you've just been explaining, like, you know, and we'll, we'll dive more into it, but what I'm listening and what, again, I really want people to take the message away here is that you can run, you can hide, you can try and cover it up. You can try and keep up with the lads, the girls, you can, you can build like, the, they say like putting this exterior on like layers, don't they? Yeah. But at some point, you've got to take layers off and you've got to strip it back down to the bone. And, yeah. and, um, and that's quite scary to do. And I think, 
yeah. from from your story, building up such a persona of like I, I even remember it. You know, like Brad, because I, I I would never have called you Bradley. No, nah. you know, it's kind of that whole persona of I'm one of the lads, but and then when you get into adulthood. If you're still holding on to that, you're delaying a very dangerous process of having a breakdown. And and obviously, you know, let's find out more about it. Best thing that ever happened to me. Best thing that ever, at the time it, it was absolute hell. Um, but it's a blessing. Like I'm so great. I smile now because I'm so so grateful for every single seconds that I struggled and battled. Because you know, 23 years of age just come off a fucking plane to Ibiza and you know you've got as much money as you could possibly want but you know I'd go days where I wouldn't shower for two days I'd maybe have a bagel at the end of the day where my anxiety was so bad I couldn't even go down to Asda It'd take me three four hours to build up the courage to go down to Asda um and then yeah just fucking got to the point where like I, it was I was gonna kill myself or I had to get help and I got so fed up of bit feeling sad that I was like my mum's gonna lose her son here eh? Like my nan's like lost so many people, they would never want me to waste another day. So I went down to the doctors. Doctor was just like, oh, straight away antidepressants. Now I've never liked my doctor. <laughs> I always thought he was a bit of a dick, right? But when he passed me them antidepressants, my mum, bless her, um, I don't care. Yeah, my mum's come to the doctors and dentist with me for years. <laughs> so my mum come down to the doctors with me just because I promised her I'd go and get some help, right? And I uh, give me antidepressants. And I said to my mum, I'm taking them. She's like, come on, like, I think let's just go out. I was like, mum, I promise you now, you're wasting your money, all right? Because I saw it on the screen, it was like £2.40 and then they charge you like 15 quid or something like that. And then I was like, right, I need to do something about this. So I bought this CBD oil thinking, oh, it's going to work. It didn't work. But for me, it was like, I'm making the effort to get up out of bed to do something. So every morning I would wake up and have these negative thoughts and my body would be on edge. So I think I got a call from the doctor saying like you can go to clinical behavioral therapy with the NHS. The woman, bless her, like she was a trainee and she'd just been to university. And first question I said is like, because I remember walking in and it says it on the wall, like mental health hospital. And that's when reality is, yeah. That's when you know it's struggling. Because you don't matter if you go in there with the latest training, it's a fucking Rolex, you pull up in whatever car you want, you, you're going to sit in a waiting room and there's other people there that, you know, are in the same similar position. Like, I don't believe anyone's going for anything worse. We'll react to situations differently, you know. But I sat there and I just remember that like, as people rocking backwards and forwards and I'm sat there and I'm like, reality hits, man. All that ego, everything was gone when I was crying to my mum, but now it's really gone. Went up there and I said to her, like, I've got one question. Like, have you ever been through anything yourself? And she said, no, like, I've been to university. There and then I knew that, fuck, like, you don't, you don't know my thought process in the morning how the fuck you gonna help me yeah. give me like bits of paper to write down my feelings and that throughout the week and i just thought in the end i thought fuck this I made a promise to my mum so i saw it out but i become obs when i say obsessed like i become obsessed with i didn't even know it's personal development at the time but i knew i had to become happy again i knew i knew i had to come happy i knew i had to find purpose but my main goal was just to wake up the next day that was my main like, if i woke up the next day and I had a shower, I was I allowed myself to go back to bed. Yeah, basically, it script everything back. But I was setting myself up to fail, you know, I was like, I'm gonna do this, do this, do this. Never happened. Yeah. You know, I'd say to my mate, I'm gonna do this, I'd go to his house, and I'd just sit there cry my eyes out. And then got to the point where I cut everyone off. Well. Yeah, and I was like, do you know what? Like, I feel a burden. It's hit my anxiety, anxiety depressions, like. You're just always so tired. You're always overthinking. You're always on edge. Like you, you're, you're lonely, but you don't. You want to be around people, but you don't. Like it's just one big mind game. So I literally just instead of waking up thinking, "Oh, I want to end my life straight away," I'd wake up like half asleep. Bang, YouTube, Oprah Winfrey. Like every morning, I watched that video four hundred times, I reckon. And it's like every morning, instead of me going, "Oh, like end it." Oprah Winfrey's telling me I can achieve anything. Then I started learning, you know, about the secret and things like that. And then my mind just, like, momentum. And then before I'd go to bed, I'd leave a bit of washing on the floor. Yeah. Because get up, put that washing away. I remember I was putting this T-shirt away. It cost me a few quid. And I just looked at my wardrobe. And I just looked at all of my rugby stuff. And I just thought, oh, you've done all right in life. You look at all the trainers. Like, not that it's materialistic things, but for me, I was so lonely. I just didn't see anything. And I was like... 
And then all the memories started flooding back of like what I've been through and stuff. And then it was put the t-shirt away, go and have a shower, brush my teeth. And then if I want to get back into bed and watch Netflix, then I'm allowed. I've earned that. Then I'd start to go on a dog walk, you know, take my dog out and then just build a man. And then I'd have to go to the gym, but my two pals would have to come with me. You know, my best mate, Jake, would drive 25 minutes, come pick me up, drive another 25 minutes, take me to the gym and then drive me back home. And I was just going to the gym and I started building my confidence back up again. But my self-love and self-esteem was that rock bottom I've gone from, you know, being in an app and maybe, you know, I'm not proud of it, but this is the level of confidence I had. You know, I'd sleep with maybe four or five girls in 24 hours as a coping mechanism. But then I couldn't even say hello to the girl on the reception because I was too shy. I was too nervous. My self-esteem was rock bottom. I was not up to me. I was like, there's nothing. Just get in, get the gym session done and go. And then the turning point was, um, yeah, I just started to build momentum and then I put something out on social media about me struggling. That was the turning point for me. And then like, loads of people started reaching out. And I made a promise to myself there and then because I got so much love and so much support. I made a promise to myself there and then that like, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure no one's loved one wakes up without a loved one. So every day I was just putting content out. Now I'm not going to sit here and say I turned into an angel straight away because I didn't. I, had to, I got my... I went back to what I was doing because I needed some structure. I needed some income. So I went back into that. But then I started to, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be for as long as I thought it was. I come out of it and just lockdown happened. And then I was like personal training and I just had this idea. I was like, I need, I need to have, a, there's so much more to life for me. You know, when rugby was over, I thought my purpose was done. Then I was just like, no, oh, there's, there's more, there's more. I know there's more. I couldn't put my finger on it. I was still involved in things I shouldn't have been. And I woke up one day and I just go, I don't want to do this anymore. I told everyone who I was involved in, I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like, I need a clean heart. I need to wake up with a clean heart. Because I've, I've done some horrible things with growing up, you know, with like women and treating people a certain way and money become more important to me than anyone else's happiness. So I don't want to sit here put out that like, I'm an angel, like I've done some really, really bad things. So I, I text everyone I'd ever hurt. Um, and some of them replied, some of them didn't. But I just said like, look, this this is where I've been in life. This this is what I've been through. Like, please, I just want you to know that I feel so much guilt. I just, I need to send this message regardless if you reply or not. Like it was a stepping stone for me of like acceptance. Then yeah, I went through lockdown, started like having counseling and therapy and it was like uh it was mad because it was like a first time i really started to deal with my sexual abuse that happened to me when i was younger like i put it to the back of my head because obviously i've just been at 100 miles now i think when you're young you don't know what's happening you, you don't have a clue you just well, I, think I, it's the like you don't think it's anything i just want to i want to make sure people are, are picking up on these points because there's something what you've just been talking about that that segment of your life sort of going through that process there was a major part there that stuck out to me, which I want people to take away is that the key to any kind of being happy and actually accepting and being able to make good strides in your life. One thing I have learned, you have to be content. Yeah. If you aren't content with yourself, you'll never get on board with anything. I've really learned that. And, and from hearing what you're saying is that you were, it was always trying to prove something to someone else, which you're just walking around as a fake individual and being a fake individual is very hard to keep up with all the time it's you know so being content is is honestly the key to you, making you, good strides you wake, up, you wake up and you feel a fraud and you gotta sleep you feel a fraud. yeah because you don't yeah you haven't you haven't this is but this isn't this crazy how we're not learning this in school how, how much you know how beneficial now would it be if we learn about how to deal with mental health through social media how to look after your body stretching dieting um being able to openly talk males females all of you can talk we have a room in our school, we can go and speak with someone who deals with mental health. Actually attacking it as a 16, 17 year old would be would be this, amazing. This, this this is my goal with the business now and I have actually, uh, I can't say too much at it now, but I said to you before we come here, I've just signed the contract. So I'm in the process of being able to change. I, I believe the next five to 10 years, I'll have one of the biggest impacts on changing the world in mental health and males and females like all around the world. Um, so yeah like that all of that idea of what i've just said come from you know dealing with my demons in lockdown i mean dealing with demons in lockdown is hard work like, i was a lot stronger to be able to do it but i just smile and laugh at it now because it's just like if i don't face it i'm doing what i've done by just running away and putting it to the back of my head so yeah i just woke up told my mate i was like i'm out of the game like, i don't want nothing to do with anything anymore i am um, i want to be a life coach you know 
I want to ask. I want to ask you a question because this will relate to a lot of people. How did you, and have you, and how did you find it cutting people out of your life who have been there from an early, an early stage that are now looking, thinking, well, Brad's changed. Yeah. So I don't. I I didn't actually really cut anyone out. Most of the people left me. If I'm completely honest with you, I wouldn't say left. Like everyone's on their journey. If I don't fit into your lifestyle anymore, that's absolutely fine. But I, I was so lucky. I had such good people around me, like unbelievable people around me. Um, I've always had a very, very small circle in the sense of like who actually really deeply knows me. But um, I found it quite easy. Um, it does take a while to distance yourself from certain individuals. But when you tell them like, look, I'm, I'm doing my thing now. Like, There's only so many times you cancel on lunch until they work out actually he's on his journey. Do you know what I mean? So in that sense, I was very, very grateful that a lot of people understood. Um, and then, yeah, when I announced that I was going to be a life coach, fucking hell, that I've never experienced anything like that. The amount of love and support I got was absolutely incredible. However, the amount of hate I got as well was was mad. Now, at start, I got sucked into it because I was like, fuck, like, they have got a point. Like, it was only like two weeks ago I was doing something I shouldn't be doing. But what people don't realise is there's boxes out there. You know, you know, I've done a lot worse, like you know, sold like crack and heroin and like really deep shit. But now the people that would have been slated me will pay for that box office event to watch that boxer because what people don't like is I had people make fake Instagram accounts, sending me abuse, threatening to go to the papers, threatening to go to the police. And at first I got sucked in and thought, fuck, fuck. But then as soon as I got my accreditation, I was like, do you know what, actually, go to the papers, all right, but make sure I'm wearing a fucking mail or t-shirt when you do it, yeah, because I've turned my life around. The only reason people project hate onto other people is because of what's missing inside of them. Yeah. You hate me because I've managed to make a decision that you're never, ever going to be able to make, and I hope you do, and actually go, do you know what, I want to have love, I want to have purpose, I want to have good people around me in life, and overnight I made that decision, and yeah, it was a mad journey to start with, but best thing they've ever fucking done. Like, do you know how I nice it is that the, the girlfriend that I've got now means the absolute world to me I sit down to her parents and be proud and tell them what I'm doing yeah. every other time what do you do oh, you know I do a few bits of my dad I've never stepped on a building site in my fucking life but I could never proudly sit there and say oh do you know what I do x y and z because how can you you tell it I sit on the car on the weekend and you know I make people's weekends good do you know what I really really resonate and relate with you when you say other people's negativity or trying to put a shadow on what you're doing. Yeah. It is a, it's a total insecurity on someone else. When other people default and say, you can't do that. Or no, what's he doing? Uh, why is he changing? Who, who does he think he is? All that is, is that is a big mirror in front of them that they can't see. Yeah. And that's self doubt. And that's, that's something I talk a lot about because we're right in terms of, I love, I love the whole, you know, make sure I'm wearing the t-shirt because at the end of the day, I, it does bug me because you know, they say that someone can't change or, you know, um, a leopard can't change its spots and stuff like that. People can change. You know, it's people, absolutely possible. People don't realise, yeah, like, you, I can literally be like, right, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and be a personal trainer. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up. Like, I can do that five or six times. One, it's no one else's fucking business. Two, it's my life. And I've got to say that, like, if you ain't paying the bills and you ain't my missus or family, I can't give a shit about your opinion because the people around me now, I shouldn't even have to think about what they think about me. They should just be there for the right reasons. So it, it, the ball just got, I just got this mentality of like, do you know what? I love expressing myself. Like, and then I was like, do you know what? Content every day, every single day. My followers went like they went rock bottom but right? they they are loads of people. I went through it and it was like people I've known 10, 15 years I'm following me and that. You look at it and you think, oh, it's a bit annoying because you'd think they'd support you. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, face to face, I bumped into someone at the airport the other week, right? And I knew I knew what he's been saying. Like, you just hear waffle, didn't you? And you're just chatting to him like nothing's ever happened. And I just thought, like, oh, do you know what? You're not even worth my time to pull you up on anything. And this is someone that has supported me at the start. And I literally just think like, you're an absolute... Like, I just laugh now. And then, yeah, I just got this fucking attitude that's like, content every day. And now... I run a biz, I own a business, you know, that I wish I had. My service is what I wish Brad Parker at 23 had. Like, I wish 
I could have a call with someone that can relate to everything. And now, like, I will love it. I'll, I'm out of bed at like half five in the morning, singing and dancing. But you're making the change now. That's like the thing for me is I've always said, like, when I do my TikTok lives, any content, I said, I'm, I've got a real thing because there's so much bullshit out there. Mm. I've got a real thing about trying to show when it goes well, when it's a normal day, but also mm. when it goes bad. So people can relate and actually go, well, I come from that background. I have a, you know, I don't have a silver spoon. I don't have this. I don't have that. However, I'm watching someone that is telling me that actually they're feeling very similar things. Yeah. Um, and relatability is key, especially when you're on video. I mean, we're the content, content is the, <laughs> the new currency. That's what they say. Um, in terms of, let's just talk about content because, you know, you're getting on the camera, you've got the podcast and everything like that. How have you found in terms of that helping your business, you know, helping the reach, putting out a good message because it does does the job, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, for me, it's effortless because I just tell the truth. Like, I, I wouldn't say I've had, like, mad personal development learning and that. I've gone through my own sort of things and I just, yeah, I just love it. I just wake up and tell the truth. Like, there's nothing hard about it. Like, God, it's me, oh dear, you're like the Gordon Ramsay of life coaching. Can you tone it down a bit? Like, granddad's watching and that. Yeah. So, but <laughs> yeah, man, no, I really enjoy it. I just, same as you, like, just all I want is people to just open. You see so much bullshit on these apps. Like, oh, I'll make six figures. You can do this overnight. It's all waffle, man. It's all waffle. Like, it takes a long, unless you go on one of these stupid programs like Love Island, yeah, it takes a long time to build up a following. And it takes, people don't understand the effort it takes the money it takes to you know put out on five platforms a day and the confidence it takes to go on there and go look i've been through x y and z and then like you want one person my rule is if one person can take something away from me i don't care if i get a thousand views ten thousand views thousand likes the couldn't give a fuck if one person just goes you know what that podcast or that reel or that piece of content has helped me get out of bed i'm like bang oh that is brad at parker at 23 would have been proud of that person yeah it's always that hindsight. Like we always get to a certain age and you think, God, if I knew what I knew now at like 18, 19 years old, that's why we say, if I ever speak to someone who's 18, 19 years old and they're like, I think I want to start my own business. I'm like, right, how can I help you? Like I, I really, really want to kind of make a good movement in terms of, right, if you want to do better, let's do it. Like, what do you need? Like, how can you help? And the problem is so many people who are big mentors, you know, like you see these billionaires, you know, all over YouTube, it's it's very hard to relate to a billionaire. Yeah. Like, it's it's very how how close can you get your own life to a billionaire? It's not something you can really sort of tap into and think, right, I'm going to be there because it's so far away. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like people that like, will come on a call with me, like, and they're just like, bro, right. I've had, my clients have been on one of my clients has been on antidepressants for 15 years. After 13 weeks with me, where we just where I knew how to dig deep into his mind and rewire everything. Within 13 weeks, he's gone from five tablets a day down to like half a tablet. Like deep depression, used to sleep with a fan on. And it's the relatability. I spent 10 grand on business coaches because I thought, right, I'm in lockdown. I just need that. Bollocks, mate. Couldn't relate to any of them. Yeah. Geezer's driving a Ferrari, a fucking Bentley. And then the other ones were like living in Bali like because it was tax free. And I, I couldn't relate to any of them. Saw a guy on TikTok Fucking hell. What, me? Nah, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know I'm on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> Saw a guy on TikTok, yeah. And I just like, I went to click on into it. So I had a fear of coaches. So I went on to call him like five, six times. And I was like, oh, sunk him up, minded. Fuck it, do it. Had the call with him. Didn't come on with any designer clobber. Down to earth. My eight, like about 30, so one year older. My relatable as fuck. Passionate as fuck, doing it for the right reasons. Best investment I've done. What I've manifest is manifestation coach, and what I've brought in over the last two months is mad. Same with my friend Dan. Um, I was lucky a trial client for him. Massively trust issues when it comes to best thing I've ever done. Has to be relatable. I was always going like, right, I want to be. The I was trying to learn from the finished product. Ah, you want you want to learn from it's people got to be two steps ahead to. yeah definitely, yeah yeah man. a lot of people get sucked into you know like when i was young when i was younger if i would have come across your social media following it was big i would have got triggered to fuck would have been jealous would have been like ah oh, he's flu tip went on there the other day and i said i actually messaged you like, i was genuinely generally fucking absolutely chuffed for you because yeah. i know the effort it takes yeah yeah i know the fucking the yeah, stress you know it the takes graphs, you know yeah. the suck like how much you get sucked into everything and I could not be happier for everyone doing well now. Yeah. And like before, I would never have reached out in a million years. Yeah, because like, it comes it comes back age. around. Like yeah. if you're positive and you're happy and you're supportive to people, it, it's like that whole life equilibrium. It will come back around in good vibes. And that that's why 
It takes effort to hate and be negative to someone. Oh, it's such a waste of it. Like people don't realize, unless like you dig deep into like your vibration and frequency here, you don't realize how many days you're ruining and how many chances that are coming because of what you're allowing into your brain. Like, do you know how much energy it takes to hold a grudge? I've I've got someone that hates me still from about like five six years ago, and I'll just hear this waffle and I just think, bro, you're wasting so much energy. Like, yeah, move on. So much energy. Like even little things. So like, if someone cuts you up in a car, yeah, every, you can have the most positive attitude to anything. I don't care what anyone yeah, says. Yeah, that. I agree. That person in the car, like everyone would scream and shout and go mad. How do you know that geezer or that woman isn't on the way to the hospital? We took two minutes to see a loved one before they pass yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Like little things. Stop just being like, selfish. Yeah, I I know my granddad in the next two three years. Yeah, he, he's gonna go, but I'm prepared for it because it's like one go and tell Nana how well like your your family's doing, and the other part of me is like it's gonna be upsetting, but um, it's not ta- it's not taking three days maximum anymore of my energy. Like I've done enough with my nan. It's and it. People think some people, oh, I don't care. No, it's my choice. We have the power to react to situations exactly how we interact with it. I've had my granddad for 29 years of my life. I watched my nan die for a week. That is more than than some kids ever, even, they don't even know their grandparents. Like if you wire your way to have such a gratitude and passion for certain situations, I don't care what anyone says, seven out of seven days, you're going to be happy. You're going to have like two or three hours on maybe some of the days where you won't be, but it's how ruthless you want to wire your brain to react to situations. Mate, I love it. I find it, I find it fascinating. We're sitting here, what like, sort of 10, 12 years later and here we are, different schools, grew up together. Yeah. Brad, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Um, Thanks so much for just sharing everything and, and for the audience where people where can they actually reach out and get in touch? Yeah, so on all platforms, it's Melia Life Coaching. Um, on YouTube, my podcast, I have a Relatable Life Story podcast. So if you're going through anything and you want to have a look at something, guarantee there's a story on there. That's uh, the Melia Movement podcast on YouTube. And yeah, just come follow me, come show some love and get in touch. If you need help with anything, I'm a life coach as well. So feel free to drop me a message. Mate, it's been an honour to have you on. It's been fun. Loved it. It's been good. Everyone who's watched, thanks so much. We'll put all of Brad's info in the description below and we'll see you all very soon.